Hello and welcome to another episode of Health Matters at the Dr. Sashiba Foundation, where everything woman is our concern. I'm your host, Claudette, and today we're diving into a crucial topic, women's health. Did you know that many women's health issues often go unnoticed or untreated? That's why we're here, to shed light on these important matters. In this video, we'll be sharing insights from an earlier conversation with Dr. Janice Chan, a medical professional from the USA. We'll also be taking a closer look at cervical cancer, a health concern that affects many women worldwide. So let's get started and learn how we can take better care of ourselves and our loved ones. First, let's hear a bit from that interview with Dr. Janice Chang. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Chang. Dr. Chang, as is most of the people we have spoken with so far, is a very, we go way back, way back. <laughs> Welcome, Janice. Thank you. Okay, so just give us a little background as to who is Dr. Chang. Okay. I'm Janice Chang. I'm a Kingston born and bred. <laughs> um, young, well, I'm not so young anymore. Kingston born and bred. Grew up, um, I went to school in Kingston at St. Hughes High School um, as neighbors with Claudette. So that's how we go way, way back from even before high school years. Um, I'm a registered medical practitioner, registered in Jamaica, in Antigua and Barbuda, and in Bermuda to practice medicine although my specialty is public health, and I'll explain a little further on the difference between public and personal health. I studied at University of the West Indies. I have my medical degree there and also a master's degree in public health. I work throughout the Caribbean um, um, and in the U.S., I am now a resident and citizen of the United States of America. Now that we know who she is, let's cut right to the issue and ask Dr. Chang, what is women's health and why it's important? So let us start, um, Janice, by with a definition of because we are focused on women. So um, let us start with a definition of what is woman's health? What do we mean when we say that? Okay, I'm going to take you one step back. What's okay. the definition of health? Okay. Um, the World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not just merely the absence of disease. Okay. So it has an aspect of dealing with disease, but it also has to do with your well-being. So once we have health, you know, um, in our minds, then when we look at women's health from a personal health perspective, women's health deals with that branch of medicine that focuses on treatment and diagnosis of diseases and conditions that affect women, their physical, emotional well-being. Now, let's focus on cervical cancer a significant health concern for women worldwide. This is a comprehensive guide on cervical cancer. Let's cover what cervical cancer is, the importance of cervical health, risk factors, symptoms, and screening methods. Let's get started. Cervical cancer occurs in the cell of the cervix, the lower part of the uterus that connects to the vagina. It often develops slowly over time, starting with precancerous changes that can be detected early through regular screenings. The cervix plays a crucial role in the female reproductive system. It produces mucus to help sperm travel from the vagina to the uterus and during childbirth, it dilates to allow the baby to pass through the birth canal. Maintaining cervical health is vital. Regular screenings and healthy lifestyle choices can significantly reduce the risk of developing cervical cancer. Early detection through pap smears and HPV tests can catch precancerous change before they develop into cancer. 
we all know that your physical makeup, your biological makeup, and your environmental situation all are what, what in public health we call determinants of health. They, have a, they play a role in your health status, how healthy you are or how unhealthy you are. Um, but this economic aspect has to do now with the social determinants of health. Where do people, what's their educational level? Where are you born? Where do you grow? Where do you work? Where do you live and age? Um, what types of jobs do you have? What kind of pay economic resources you have available to you? We know that all of those factors are some of the causes of the causes of disease. Several factors can increase the risk of cervical cancer. The most significant is infection with the human papillomavirus, or HPV. Other risk factors include smoking, having a weakened immune system, long-term use of birth control pills, and having multiple free full-term pregnancies. Genetic and environmental factors also play a role. A family history of cervical cancer can increase your risk, as can exposure to certain environmental toxins and an unhealthy lifestyle. Preventative measures are key. Getting vaccinated against HPV, practicing safe sex, quitting smoking, and having regular screenings are effective ways to protect yourself. Cervical cancer in its early stages often doesn't cause noticeable symptoms. However, as it progresses, symptoms may include abnormal vaginal bleeding, unusual discharge, pelvic pain, and pain during intercourse. Early detection significantly improves the chances of successful treatment. The pap smear test is a procedure used to collect cells from the cervix to detect precancerous or cancerous changes. It's quick and generally painless and can be life-saving. HPV testing is another critical tool. It detects the presence of the virus that causes cervical cancer. Detecting high-risk HPV strains early allows for closer monitoring and early intervention. Screening frequency varies based on age and health history. Women should start getting pap smears at age 21 and continue every three years if results are normal. From age 30 to 65, it's recommended to have a pap smear combined with an HPV test every five years or a pap smear alone every three years. Always consult your healthcare provider for personalized advice. Thank you for watching Health Matters at the Daughters of Sheba Foundation, where everything woman is our concern. Remember, regular screenings and preventative measures are your best defense against cervical cancer. Stay informed, stay healthy, and be proactive about your health. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with your loved ones.